Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Money Girl podcast. I'm Laura Adams, a personal finance expert and award-winning author based in Austin, Texas. On this show, I help you get the knowledge, resources, and motivation to manage your money with confidence. My goal with every episode is to leave you with practical tips and tactics that you can use right away to create a richer life. And I am so excited right now because I've been putting the final touches on my next book, which will be out soon in print as an ebook and as an audiobook. The title is Debt Free Blueprint How to Get Out of Debt and Build a Financial Life You Love. If you want to pre order at a discount, make sure that you're on my email list so you'll be notified as soon as it's out. And I'll give you a reminder about how to make sure you're on the list at the end of the show. And if you're a new listener, or even somebody who's been in the Money Girl community for a while and you have not yet rated and reviewed the show, what's going on? I would really appreciate you taking a moment to do that. You can submit a very short review or or just a a five-star rating on iTunes. And if you listen on a smartphone, you may have figured this out. You can swipe the show's cover art and then easily submit a rating or review right there in the app. I read all your feedback, and it really means a lot to me. Plus, your feedback helps listeners find the show and know what we're all about. Today's show is for you if you've ever dreamed of an early retirement. And who hasn't dreamed of an early retirement? In fact, there's a growing movement called FIRE, F-I-R-E, and it stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. And I love hearing from a growing number of young people who are planning for an early retirement. In fact, today's show was inspired by a question from Megan M., who says, My husband is a teacher who makes around $50,000 per year and loves his job. I'm an engineer and make about $120,000 per year. We currently live off my husband's salary except for our car and mortgage payments. While I enjoy my job, I'd like to retire early, perhaps in my 30s. How should that affect my choice to contribute to a Roth or a traditional IRA? Megan, thanks so much for your great question. No matter if you're like Megan and you're just thinking about getting out of the rat race early, maybe you've got a high pressure job that you want to get out of, or maybe you want a new lifestyle, you want to travel more, or you're just dreaming about doing something that doesn't require full-time work. Being ready for retirement sooner rather than later is a wonderful and wise goal. So in today's show, I'm going to cover six tips and strategies to help you amass enough money to make a transition to maybe a less lucrative career or to quit working altogether and enjoy an early retirement. As always, you'll find the show notes and the full archive of podcasts in the Money Girl section at quickanddirtytips.com. This is episode number 561 called Six Tips and Investing Strategies to Retire Early Without a Penalty. All right, before we dive into the specific tips, I want to step back and consider what early retirement is and whether it's a goal that you really want to achieve. The concept of retirement as a time to spend your days in a rocking chair, you know, after you get the gold watch at your retirement party, after you worked for a company for decades, that idea of retirement is just completely outdated. Now, retirement is when you no longer have to work. But many who retire still choose to work. Maybe you want to, quote, retire and still work part-time if you enjoy what you're doing. Or you might choose to move into self-employment or do volunteer work that keeps you involved in your community. Or you might take a sabbatical to travel and work remotely. The sky is the limit. The idea is that retirement doesn't have to be the end of income-producing work. It can be shifting from work that you must do to pay the bills to work that you truly want to do. And if you want to join this FIRE movement, I'm going to cover the basic strategies that you need to use to make early retirement a realistic goal. So the first tip is calculate your savings target. 
First, you have to figure out the total amount of savings you'll need. And a good place to start is to know the total of your living expenses now, such as your food, your housing, insurance, medical bills, and transportation. Remember that once you're retired, some of those expenses may end, such as commuting or buying expensive clothes for work and saving. But you may have larger expenses, such as travel and hobbies, or even some costs that are picked up by an employer now that you will have to pay for on your own later on, such as health insurance, life insurance, or a smartphone. You can use some financial tools, such as Mint or Quicken, to track your expenses to get an idea of what your typical weekly, monthly, and annual expenses are by category. There's no way to know exactly how much you'll spend in the future but you've got to have an estimated budget in order to calculate an early retirement savings target. There's no hard rule, but a good guideline is to save 10 to 15 times your annual budget. Now, this is the case if you're looking at a traditional retirement, maybe in your mid-60s. For example, if you live on $100,000 per year and you're going to receive Social Security retirement benefits, a good savings target is between a million and 1.5 million. But in order to retire early, maybe like Megan who wants to retire in her 30s or maybe in your 40s, you're going to need much more savings to ensure that your nest egg can last. I mean, we're talking about a 45 or 55-year retirement. You're not going to have Social Security retirement benefits to back you because you can't start collecting those until age 62 at the very earliest. So how much you need to begin an early retirement is going to depend on a variety of factors, including your desired retirement age how much you plan to spend or withdraw from your savings once you retire, how much you earn during retirement if you earn anything at all, and your average post-retirement investment return. So those are just a few things that get factored in. Since the math can get complicated because there are so many variables, the best way to create an early retirement savings goal is to work with a financial advisor. Now, you might also use a retirement planning calculator on your own. There's a good one at AARP. But using a financial advisor is really worth it if if you truly are serious about making sure that you can retire early. As your income, your debt, your lifestyle changes, you're going to want to reevaluate how much savings and income that you need for an early retirement and whether you're on track to achieve it. And working with an advisor is a really great way to make sure that you stay on track. If you want to learn a little bit more about how much you are going to need for retirement, you might want to check out a previous podcast, podcast number 555 called How to Retire with Enough Money and Income can help you think through some important points on retirement. All right, the second tip is invest consistently. Guys, this is the real trick to retiring early. It is investing early and often. The more money you set aside, the better off you'll be. You cannot wait for the quote right time to invest because it doesn't exist. No matter what's going on in the financial markets, your money cannot grow if it's sitting on the sidelines. Every day of investment growth matters, especially when you want an extra large nest egg to retire early. My favorite way to invest is to put it on autopilot, so I really don't even have to think about it. Now, I do look at my investments and check in with them frequently, but the reality is if you put it on autopilot, it's happening in the background of your life so it doesn't slip through the cracks. With any type of investment account, you can set up automatic contributions on a set schedule. Maybe it's daily or monthly. I want to challenge you to increase your savings rate until it hurts and then reach a little higher. If you're investing 5% of your income, push it to 10% by the end of the year or increase it by 1% every month. Some investing platforms can even automate your savings increases. So you tell it, I want to go up 1% every quarter. Try cutting back on the largest expenses in your budget first. Those are typically housing and food. And it's also smart to reduce unnecessary small expenses. But I always recommend slashing those big costs first because they are bigger wins that can really intensify your investing results if you take those big savings and put them right into your retirement. 
Also, supplement your savings with additional income. When you earn a raise, a bonus, or receive a cash gift, make sure that's going toward your retirement. And you can certainly create more income by starting a side business or getting a second job to consistently boost your retirement account. Retiring early is an aggressive goal, so you're going to need to attack it with a lot of gusto to pull it off. It won't be easy, but it is definitely possible. If you're looking for some ways to save more, you might be interested in podcast number 528, 14 Tips to Stop Impulse Buying and Save Money. All right, the third tip for early retirement is watch your retirement fees. Fees are so important because they impact your retirement accounts, investment growth, and that impacts how quickly you can retire. Various fees get deducted right out of your account, and that reduces the amount of money that can compound for the future. While no one likes the idea of paying fees, they're largely unavoidable. Companies that manage investments that administer accounts have a lot of expenses to cover. For example, if you participate in a company 401k, you pay a fee to the investment firm that manages the plan, and you also pay fees on each of the investments you choose inside the plan. Over time, a small difference in fees, such as paying 1% instead of 0.25%, can really add up. So your job is to choose investments that leave as much of your earnings as possible in the account so you can hit your early retirement goal. Okay, we're on tip number four, which is minimize taxes. As you know, taxes take a big bite out of your income. So to keep more money and protect your future investment earnings, you've got to do everything legally possible to cut your tax liability. Tax-advantaged accounts, such as workplace retirement plans, IRAs, and health savings accounts, these are perfect. These were designed to help you save and pay less tax at the same time. That's why I'm always recommending them to you. With a traditional retirement account, such as a traditional 401k or a traditional IRA, contributions are made on a pre-tax basis. And then your withdrawals of those contributions and the earnings get taxed based on your ordinary income tax rate later on. Now, with a Roth account, it works kind of the opposite. So maybe you've got a Roth 401k or a Roth IRA. With those, your contributions are taxed up front, but your withdrawals of contributions and earnings are tax-free. The more that you defer or eliminate taxes, the more you can invest now to reach your early retirement goal. Additionally, having tax-free accounts to withdraw from in retirement leaves you more money to spend because you don't have to pay tax on it. The allowable contribution limits for tax-advantaged accounts increase with the cost of living index. So in other words, they change from year to year. So you always want to check to make sure that you know what the maximum is so you can plan to hit it and max out your accounts. If you max out these tax-advantaged accounts first, you're getting the biggest bang for your buck. Also, you want to make sure to claim as many legitimate tax deductions and tax credits as possible on your taxes each year. These might include deductions for home mortgage interest, student loan interest, state and local taxes, charitable contributions, medical expenses, and taking the child tax credit. You need to keep detailed records so that you know when you should itemize your deductions to save money instead of claiming the standard deduction. If you're not keeping track of it, you really have no way to know what's more beneficial. And you can do either method, whichever one is going to save you the most money. You can even switch it from year to year. Working with a qualified tax accountant to minimize your tax liability can really pay off. If you're not sure what expenses are tax-related, or maybe you've got a complex situation because you own a business or rental property, be sure to consult with a tax pro. Tip number five is know the retirement withdrawal rules. This takes us back to Megan's question about using a retirement account when you plan to retire early. After all, you've probably heard me say that taking money out of a retirement account before age 59 and a half typically means paying a 10% early withdrawal penalty. 
Well, the good news is that there are legitimate ways to avoid the penalty. The first option is to use a Roth retirement plan at work or a Roth IRA, which you open on your own. As I mentioned, a Roth requires you to pay tax up front on your contributions. Therefore, you're allowed to withdraw your contributions at any time without paying a penalty or additional tax. So this makes a Roth a really great option for early retirees. However, you need to understand that your investment gains in the account have not been taxed. So if you choose to withdraw earnings from a Roth before age 59 and a half, those amounts would be subject to tax plus the 10% penalty. Now, there is a hiccup here because high earners are not eligible for a Roth IRA, but that rule does not apply to a Roth at work. So Megan, I would recommend that you contribute to a Roth at work if you have that option. You can contribute to a Roth 401k or a Roth 403b, regardless of how much money you make. Here are the Roth IRA eligibility rules for 2018. If you file taxes as a single and your modified adjusted gross income is higher than $135,000, that's the cutoff. That means you cannot contribute to a Roth IRA. When you earn in the range from 120,000 to 135,000, you can contribute, but your contribution total is reduced. Now, if you're married and you file taxes jointly, you cannot contribute to a Roth IRA when your household's joint modified adjusted gross income exceeds 199,000. And when you earn from 189 to 199,000, your contribution total is reduced. Megan didn't mention how she and her husband file taxes, but if they file jointly and they've got a total of 170,000 of household income, they each qualify for a Roth IRA. Additionally, they can also max out a retirement account at work or one for the self-employed in the same year. But what if you earn too much to qualify for a Roth IRA or you don't have an employer that offers a Roth retirement plan? How are you going to retire early? Well, I've got good news. You can still retire early using a traditional 401k or a traditional IRA and still avoid the early withdrawal penalty using a couple of workarounds. The first is an exception that applies if you have a workplace retirement plan and you decide to retire at age 55 or later. If you are no longer employed, you can use what's called the rule of 55 to take penalty-free withdrawals from your 401k or your 403b. Now, for certain government workers, this exception can apply as early as age 50, but Note that this rule, this rule of 55, does not apply to any type of IRA or SEP IRA. It applies to workplace plans and also to solo 401ks if you're self-employed. In the next tip, I'll cover the second key way to avoid an early withdrawal penalty if you want to retire younger than age 55. So the final tip, number six, is understand 72T payment plans. This is a little known rule that you can use to avoid the early withdrawal penalty no matter your age. This exception goes by a few different names, including 72T payment plan, 72T distribution, substantially equal periodic payments, or SEPP, or a SEP plan. The name 72T comes from its numbered section of the IRS code, just like a lot of the crazy things that we talk about, like 401k and 403b. They're all the numbers in the tax code. So a 72T allows you to set up a plan to take equal monthly or annual distributions from your retirement account, such as a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. You can also set up a 72T distribution for a workplace plan, such as a 401k or a 403b, if you no longer work for your employer. The amount that you can withdraw using this distribution plan is calculated using one of three accounting methods approved by the IRS. They use factors such as your account balance, your age, and your life expectancy. The payment calculation can be based on the amount in a single retirement account or on the aggregate of all your retirement accounts. 
The problem is a 72T comes with restrictions and some risky consequences if you don't use it the right way. So it's really important to understand that once you begin taking 72T distributions, you cannot stop taking them for a certain period of time. Once you put a 72T plan into place, you must continue taking periodic payments for a minimum of five years or until you turn 59 and a half, whichever is longer. So in other words, if you started a 72T at age 30, you would have to continue payments for 29 and a half years until you reach age 59 and a half. After you complete a series of five-year distributions or reach age 59 and a half, again, whichever is longer, you can take retirement distributions any way you like. However, for most traditional accounts, once you reach age 70 and a half, you generally must take annual required minimum distributions, no matter if you used a 72T plan or not. Another issue with a 72T distribution plan is that while you're taking these distributions, you cannot make any new contributions to your retirement account. You can't even put a rollover uh, into the account. And of course, all the distributions that you take from a 72T plan, any that were not previously taxed, will be subject to ordinary income tax. When you execute this properly, taking a 72T payment plan can be a very smart way to tap your retirement funds early without penalty. However, figuring out the allowable payment schedule can be a little complex. You can't just name your own amount for the amount you want to take per month or year. So always get help from a tax professional who has experience setting up a 72T plan. Taking too little, taking too much, or even missing a distribution deadline can result in expensive consequences. In addition to owing income tax, if you mess up a 72T plan, that means that all your distributions will be subject to the 10% early withdrawal penalty. Plus, you'll have to pay interest on unpaid tax and penalties that get calculated from the original date that you made an error. So, Megan, I would encourage you and every early retiree to weigh your options carefully and never enter into a 72T plan lightly. Make sure that you can afford to trade your nest egg for an immediate cash flow. Taking payments now means that you're draining resources that would be available to you later in retirement. So the key is making sure you have plenty of money when you're retiring early. Megan, thanks again for your question. I hope that helps you feel more confident in maxing out your retirement accounts. All right, let's quickly review the six tips and investing strategies to retire early. Number one, calculate your savings target. Number two, invest consistently. Number three, watch your investment fees. Number four, minimize taxes. Number five, know the retirement withdrawal rules. And number six, understand 72T payment plans. And before we go, I also want to invite you to sign up for my free short weekly email that's filled with tips, tools, and recommendations that I think you might enjoy. To get it, simply text get updates with no space to the number 33444. Again, text get updates with no space to the number 33444. Or you can sign up at lauradadams.com. As I mentioned, if you're on my list, you'll be the first to know when Debt Free Blueprint, How to Get Out of Debt and Build a Financial Life You Love, is available for pre order at a big discount. If you enjoy listening to this podcast, you're going to love this audiobook. That's all for now. I'll talk to you next week, courtesy of Money Girl, your guide to a richer life. This episode is brought to you by Macmillan, our publisher. This year, Macmillan turned 175 years old. And to celebrate, we brought together Macmillan employees to share their favorite stories of working here. From publishing best-selling books. And I just remember seeing them across the concourse. And I started running up to them. I'm like, you're number one, you're number one. And we all started jumping up and down. To making a difference in the world. Of all the books that I've worked on, I feel like this book more than any other has changed people's lives. And that's an incredible opportunity. To the impact working here has on our own lives. You know, being at Macmillan was kind of a big part of our story to begin with. 
we officially listed our location on the marriage certificate as the Flatiron Building, and we couldn't find any others that matched in the records. So, so we're just going to go ahead and say that we're the first to actually get married in the Flatiron Building. <laughs> <laughs> Macmillan, bringing authors and readers together since 1843. For more stories of our long-standing history in the publishing business, follow us on social at Macmillan USA. That's M-A-C-M-I-L-L-A-N-U-S-A.